My name is Rabbi Shoshana Meira Friedman. I'm an alum and now faculty member at Hebrew College. For me, the shofar is one of the most evocative and powerful symbols of the Jewish New Year and of this whole time of year. And I was so excited when I discovered later in my Jewish life that we don't have to wait until Rosh Hashanah to hear the shofar. We can actually hear it every weekday, every non-Shabbat day of the month of Elul leading up to Rosh Hashanah if we are lucky enough to blow it or have one of these videos to listen to. The shofar is a mysterious symbol because it has so many different meanings, from the ram caught in the thicket at the binding of Isaac, to crowning God with the trumpet of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, to the sound of the shofar from Mount Sinai. For me, there is another kind of call of the shofar, and that kind of call resonates particularly deeply at this time of year. This is a blessing in the Amidah, the weekday Amidah, which you may or may not be familiar with. Um, and it's a set of blessings that is, are said during uh, Shachari, Mincha, and Mari services, the morning, afternoon, and evening services during the week on non-Shabbat and holiday days. And this blessing about the shofar says, Teka b'shofar gadol l'cherutenu, sound the great shofar of our freedom. Visa nes lekabetz galuyotenu, and raise a banner for the ingathering of our exiles. Vikabsenu yachad me arba kanfot haaretz, and gather us in from the four corners of the world. Now, for sure, the rabbis who wrote this liturgy had collective redemption in mind and the ingathering of the people who had been exiled from the land of Israel and their descendants. But for me, this is a deeply internal prayer, especially at this time of year. Teka b'shofar gadol l'cherutenu. Sound the great shofar of our freedom. Whatever is stuck inside of us, whatever emotions, whatever judgments and expectations from other people, feelings that we have that we can't let out, whatever is stuck that needs to be released, let it be released for our freedom. This son nes lekabetz galuyotenu, and raise the flag, raise the rallying point for the parts of us that have been exiled, for those banished parts of us, whatever they are, from whatever parts of our lives, from whatever moments. Let them come home. Let them come back to self and to the light of the love of our self. and gather us in from the four corners of the earth. The parts of us that have been lost along the way, the passions, the ideas, the bits and pieces that belong to us and yet we've somehow lost track of, let those come home as well. I love in that in this prayer, the word that is often translated as banner is nis, and this word in biblical Hebrew comes from the idea of having a rallying point for a crowd of people, whether that's camps of Israelites or an army. Picture a big flag waving in the air amidst a crowd. But Ness, of course, then also comes to mean sign or wonder. And from there, it comes to mean miracle. In my experience, it is a true miracle and wonder when we can settle into that center point in ourselves and rally around the self with a capital S. Whether we call that self part of God, whether we understand that self as a deeply internal and humanist idea. On this day of Elul, I invite you to meditate on this intention and perhaps to have it in mind the next time you hear the call of the shofar. I release what is stuck inside of me I send compassion to the parts of me I have exiled. I gather in the parts of me I have lost. I release what is stuck inside of me. I send compassion to the parts of me I have exiled. And I gather in the parts of me that I have lost. With these intentions, I return to my whole self to the light of the love of that self and the light of the love of God. Psalm 27, verses 13 and 14. Ule'i hemanti nirod vetu 
Vadonai Beret Because 